One of the most fundamental values of the NCAA is the notion that we provide fairness and competition, that by establishing rules, everyone has an equal chance of success on a playing field. Uh, and in order for that to work, we have to have an enforcement process that, that reflects those rules, that makes sure that everyone who is following the rules has an equal opportunity of those that's, who are not. Uh, these new enforcement uh, policies and processes uh, will provide the proper kind of incentives to make sure that you're following the rules and those that aren't will know that uh, they have some pretty strict sanctions uh, in line for them. The new enforcement policies are almost completely a product of the membership. Uh, the task force and working groups that uh, addressed all of these were integral to shaping the policies. Uh, there were many, many meetings, 30, 40 meetings out in the membership to talk about these rules. Uh, they've been fully vetted with the membership, and I'm very impressed with the product that they've come out with. Nobody's in a better position to understand what's going on in a program than the head coach. Head coaches work with their student athletes uh, on a very regular basis. They work with their assistant coaches daily. They're the person uh, that's in charge of the program and that has the best pulse for it. So it's, it's really a matter of the buck stopping with the, uh, with the coaches and the administrative team that supports them. Now that we've uh, finalized this component, uh, we can move to the revision of our rules. The Division I rules are widely recognized as being complex, including things that may be less enforceable than we'd like and not always as relevant to uh, what really goes on today in, in intercollegiate athletics. So we're going to be bringing forward in the coming months a, a new set of rules, a revised edition, if you will, of the Division I rule book. And that's going to be a big task, but it'll have uh, all the impacts that we want.